Travis Wayne Goodsell. The video I just made was corrupted. So, <clears throat> am I under cyber attack? <clears throat> or is it just a glitch in the system? So, let's try to do it again. It obviously won't be the same. And that was a good video. Important one. I noticed as I checked the statistics this morning that the missionary, the 18 year old missionary who commented oh, over a week ago, is now gone. He uh, uses uh, Christian interpretation with Jesus for the first vision, and so he thought he could show me up by putting a, a hate comment as a missionary, an 18 year old missionary, on my video without ever watching the video. Because the stats showed he didn't watch the video. The percentage was enough to put in the comment and run away. And so he was reacting to the thumbnail picture of the video. He did not listen. And I notice also that uh, the younger generation who watch, generations, likewise do not stick around long to listen. This is mostly for women who will also go up to my age and the one age above. You're not listening. And this is partly due to the TikTok generation. And I, I had fully explained this in the corrupted file video. But uh, we won't get into it for this one. It's a manipulation of your feelings. That's what TikTok is all about, in short. Without going into the specific details that I excellently did in the corrupted file. <clears throat> and with religious indoctrination, they utilize emotional and mental manipulations. They want to cause fear. They want to cause reverence. So that you can be controlled and manipulated with your physical actions. And that's the whole point. Is that read, ponder, pray, get a feeling called the spiritual witness is not only a misinterpretation of Moroni chapter 10 verses 3 through 5 because physical manifestation is in there it doesn't say spiritual manifestation it says manifestation which means physical manifestation and if you have been indoctrinated with the misinformation, you have been misinformed and you become weaponized. Because you now go around as a missionary, for example, spreading the lies from what you've been misinformed about. <coughs> and you attack people who do not conform and comply to your indoctrination like the 18 year old missionary and so we can see that the church is doing an excellent job in seminary and at church and at conference indoctrinating the youth weaponizing them 
so that they will not listen to me. So they can't tolerate listening to lies, which are a beam in the moat, false accusation. They're the ones who've been misinformed and have been weaponized to attack other people. And if you're wondering what the misinformation is, because the church is true, right? The Joseph Smith history. Have you looked at the Joseph Smith papers and compared them? Oh, because your spiritual witness told you the Joseph Smith history is true? So you don't need to? You need to. The Joseph Smith papers are the new canon for our scriptures. It has replaced our physical published canon. It says so. It's the authoritative source for all things Joseph Smith. Right there on the front of the website. Free to use, so you don't have to buy the books. <clears throat> but, for example, you pray to find out, read, ponder, pray to find out if the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is true. And you get the feeling, yes. Well, go into the Joseph Smith papers for the Joseph Smith history where Joseph Smith gives the name of the church. The Church of Latter-day Saints. Willard Richards, we are informed, added Jesus Christ to the name of the church. We have been lied to. We have been emotionally and mentally manipulated through indoctrination. Joseph Smith's scriptures, vision accounts in this particular case, has been manipulated and altered. And in this particular case, both a tampering with the document and with interpretation of the document. Because by putting the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints in place of the Church of Latter-day Saints, missionaries now see the first vision, and it never says Jesus Christ. Never. It just says personage. The personage who spoke to me. I saw two personages in a pillar of light above the brightness of the sun at noonday. Oh, that's the definition of Emmanuel. Translation, technically. From the Egyptian god, Amun. Oh, wait. Joseph Smith has something with Amun, like Adam on die Amun. <laughs> yeah. Go figure. You've been lied to. You're wrong to go around and tell people that the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints was established by Joseph Smith and that he had seen literal history, physically seen Jesus Christ who told him Christianity is wrong. And yet don't make the clue because the church never teaches you about the creed of Christianity that started it all in 325 CE. Joseph Smith says they're an abomination. The first creed that started it all is an abomination. And it's the Nicene Council Creed where Christianity was established, 325 CE. Not the Roman period time, 1 AD, 325 CE. 
It was when Christianity was created by Roman Emperor Constantine. And they chose the name Jesus. And Constantine, to settle the dispute for the nature and character, created a word that has no meaning. Homuzion. They put consubstantial. It means without substance. But by saying that, it means that we have knowledge of what this non-substance is, which we can't because it's not substance. It's a blatant outright lie that he made for the nature and character of Jesus, whom is incorrect. Because as you read Matthew, for example, he quotes Isaiah, does not name Isaiah, takes out sign for sign in the heavens, quotes the passage, alters the translation with a misleading translation, God with us, sun god at noonday from the Egyptians. It's a transliteration, which means it's the same phonetics in the two languages, Paleo-Hebrew and Egyptian. So if I were to transliterate Travis into Egyptian, it's Travis. <laughs> that simple. And yet, the redactor of Matthew threw that in there. It's not in Isaiah, is it? Because you checked, right? <clears throat> and so despite saying that his name's supposed to be Emmanuel, the author then says, and so they named him Jesus. <laughs> That's not his name. What are you doing? Because you've been taught to believe that it's literal history, and therefore Jesus is true and real, not consubstantial. And you use that as your spiritual witness. When you read, ponder, pray to find out if that is true. You get the feeling, yes, it's true. Jesus is true. Yay, I feel so wonderful. Warm and fuzzy feelings. You've been mentally and emotionally manipulated with misinformation. You've been indoctrinated because you're supposed to use the learning of the Jews for your interpretation. Because as a literal history, it's contradictory and confusing. It doesn't make sense. This is wrong. Something's not right here. That's what you're supposed to be feeling. But when you apply the learning of the Jews, 1 Nephi chapter 1 verse 2, oh, wait a minute, the Book of Mormon also? Uh-oh. You mean it's not literal history either? You mean it's not Christian interpretation? You mean it's not Jesus? Even though they say Jesus? Yeah. The Gospels were culturally appropriated by Constantine in 325 CE. That's what he did. They were written before. And with the creation of Christianity, they went to the Jewish scriptures, culturally appropriated them, and replaced them. Now it's a Christian interpretation. Now it's a real, literal history Jesus, born immaculately in the Roman period time, who is not the descendant of King David. This is how Constantine became the abominable Christ, the great abominable church, 
That's what verse 19 in the Joseph Smith history of the first vision is explaining to you. It's why that creed is an abomination. But because the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints tells you to read, ponder, and pray about the Book of Mormon, about Joseph Smith's scriptures, about church history, under a Christian viewpoint, with Jesus as the Christ, when it's just a matter of yes or no feelings, positive or negative, about your reading, pondering, and praying to ask a question. Is it true? You already go in with a bias. Your feelings have to say, yes. Ah, I feel warm and fuzzy. This is the spirit saying it's true. You've been mentally and emotionally manipulated. This is a psychological manipulation. This is what psychologists do. This is why psychology is a pseudoscience. It's fake. It's a fraud. And as such, it was Stanley Smith Stevens who created the dichotomous and non-dichotomous categorization system which I had explained beautifully in the corrupted file and I included how my brother was manipulated by the church and then weaponized to come after me to protect the church and his spiritual witness feelings because this is what you do you read, ponder, pray. You have to only get the positive feeling that it's true, according to Christian interpretation with Jesus. Because if you keep getting the negative one, you're still not getting it right. You got to keep praying until you get the positive feeling. That's where they get you. Because I've seen the comments over the years I had a feeling I read and pondered and prayed and I got the feeling that it's true how dare you you're an evil Korahor Travis you were weaponized by the misinformation of the church And this was caused by Brigham Young. Brigham Young and Heber C. Kimball joined the church, 1832, were sent out on missions, became members of the Twelve because of their great conversion. They first converted what became known as the Danites. These Danites were those specifically brought in to destroy the church. And those are the other videos I've talked about. But then those Danites also were called to be missionaries. And they all went around telling other people who were not disgruntled with whoever caused 9-11-18-26 which became the Book of Mormon. Again, other videos. They plotted to sabotage the Jewish learning of the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith's church. Because if you apply a Jewish learning to Matthew, now it makes sense. just like with the Book of Mormon. Ex-Mormons, who I'm speaking with 
to the choir, they know the church isn't true, but they don't quite know what the truth is because they take the baggage of indoctrination with them. But they left because their spiritual witness was challenged by the prophets. First by the gospel topic essays. They came out and said, hey, I know you had a spiritual witness, but this is how it really is now. <laughs> yeah. And they still lied to you, but because the new lie is different from the spiritual witness that you had for the previous lie, you said, I'm unhappy and I'm out. <clears throat> and you still carry that indoctrination with you. It's just the old school indoctrination rather than the new spiritual witness that Mormons are now supposed to have. And Mormons who stay in are either the younger generation who are indoctrinated with the new lies or are those who were okay with the transitioning from the old spiritual witness into the new spiritual witness of lies. I hope that makes sense. And so Brigham Young went around telling people it's the Christian church with Jesus to sabotage Joseph's church. And his Danites got Joseph Smith locked up in jail because they formed a secret combination to commit crimes. Blame it on Joseph. And with Joseph locked up, just like that incident on 9-11-1826 that resulted in the Book of Mormon, they took over the church while Joseph was away. But Joseph Smith kept getting out. So they had to murder him. And then they took over the church completely and fled the country. Because they sort of burnt a lot of bridges as the secret combination. And then formed their kingdom of Deseret in Mexico territory. Which the next year the United States took over. But that's again another video that I video that I've explained in other videos. <sighs> and so I, this is how you've been manipulated. This is why you can't watch my videos. This is why you attack me with hate comments and thumbs down is because you've been brainwashed, you've been indoctrinated. And it's sad. That's why you're called a cult. Because those who are unfamiliar with the church, who are looking at you from the outside, they see this spiritual witness excuse and they recognize it as indoctrination that cults do and it's technically an occult but they don't get to that far they don't hear about Joseph Smith's visions as literal history and which means it's occult speaking with the dead Rock in a hat. Joseph Smith had nothing to do with the Book of Mormon, by the way. Just so that you know. Again, if you had a spiritual witness manifested to you that Joseph Smith is either true or false because he used a rock and a hat for the Book of Mormon, you're still misled. You still have the incorrect information. You have to use science and the scientific process and methodology with the Socratic method for argument, the developing of theories, 
sound arguments. An argument is not to be misdefined. <clears throat> Joseph Smith intentionally designed the book, well, Senior and Sidney Rigdon, designed the Book of Mormon to correct the incorrect translations from the Bible and bridge to the corrected translation and either through story form or directly and unfortunately Mormons have added translation with new definitions and that's what Nelson has done <coughs> at the pulpit of conference let God prevail chief cornerstone of the cornerstone no oh my god no no but then you realize what he's doing he's purposely manipulating you mentally and emotionally manipulating you because he knows the indoctrinated Mormons will automatically believe because they've read pondered and prayed the words of President Russell M. Nelson they had the right feeling and therefore anything he says afterward is based on the misinformation from that mental and emotional manipulation and as a result Mormons get led astray and it weaponizes you as Mormons to attack me and to lie to other people as missionaries so that's the sad reality that how do I break through and I can't the individuals have to break it out of that indoctrination and the more indoctrinated you become the more you become dead inside faith without works is dead the works is the manifestation of the results of your faith but a spiritual witness can never must never produce the physical results because like Constantine's Jesus Hamuzian he can never be manifested and so Christians don't even bother to try it's all about a spiritual witness for them well that sounds familiar doesn't it yeah because Russell M Nelson's Jesus thus Brigham Young's Jesus is not the same as Constantine's Jesus that's how they excuse the first vision in verse 19 Christianity is wrong their creed is wrong and so they create a new thing Jesus is before Constantine as literal history They're doing exactly what Constantine did but just denouncing Constantine and creating their own Jesus ours is the true Jesus <laughs> it's still wrong and so you see for conference they're already setting it up watch conference Jesus learn about Jesus let's get to that exact title for him because I had planned to do a video on it uh, it's this one join us Palm Sunday weekend for messages of Christ well they already sabotaged it they didn't say Jesus did they they say it for the uh, preparing for Easter find peace and hope through Jesus Christ oh he's a shepherd oh trigger yeah. so Palm Sunday is the Christian interpretation of the Jewish Passover 
It's Jewish scripture. But Christians have replaced the Jews. You know, that white supremacist thing. And so the church is using Christian interpretation, even though they say, that, oh, no, 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 we're not Constantine's Christians. We're pre-Constantine Christians. Manipulation. We'll learn what we believe. And they don't have that picture when you click on it. The two sister missionaries? Nope, not there. Why is that, guys? Why are you putting thumbnails that are not in the video? Or not in the web page? I know how it can be done. But, yeah. So I hope that helps you. Learning the truth must be done through science, not psychological manipulation called indoctrination. Don't be a psychologist. Be a scientist. <sighs> Hopefully, once you realize this, then you realize how the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the great and abominable church. Verse 19 of the Joseph Smith First Vision. And then you see verse 40 as Joseph Smith explaining, hey, our Christ is the Jewish Christ instead. And then Doctrine and Covenants section 103 verse 16, and he's going to be a mortal Mormon. Now it makes sense, because you're not using Christian interpretation with Jesus. So I'm going to get a million views and everybody will understand and come out of the church, leave, right? My brother will not pursue suing me, right? The lawyer did not respond yesterday, though. That could be good, or it means she's going, oh, yeah, because she's Mormon, too. <clears throat> And so if she decides to go all in because my brother paid her, then uh, I don't know. But I slammed my brother because he lied to her. Because he was told by YouTube, sorry, Todd, your brother has a point. You're a public figure. He can do the videos about you. And my brother instead went and got a lawyer even though I made the correction to his career, he says, I'm lying. I'm a mean, vicious person. And I did those videos. I made a mistake. I'm making a correction. I owned it. Because I went to his, his uh, social media profile on LinkedIn and went over it with you and made the correction on my video. I thought the problem was now resolved because YouTube told my brother to go to hell <laughs> and I, in good faith, made the correction. And I thought it was resolved. Todd disappeared, but my brother played the evil adversary, because his name is Fox, by the way. Fox Mulder. Interesting. That's the thumbnail that was on the corrupted file. <laughs> but nonetheless, <laughs> he went and got a lawyer. I thought it was resolved. I was vindicated. I made a correction. And I told the lawyer this, but Todd thought that I'm defiant. He's kept pushing because the church, as it is revealed through the lawyer, the manner in which she worded it, that I'm causing economic trouble for my brother. That can only happen 
if my brother is being threatened at his job. Tell Travis to take down those videos. Yeah, the videos, even though I was incorrect about my brother's job for the church, the information about the church is still true. The church has lost members. And that's what the church wants covered up. And it's right before conference. And it's during my birthday. <sighs> this is the pattern of practice of the church. Because they know I cannot be mentally and emotionally manipulated. But they can with Todd. And even though they may not have directly said, you will get fired, Todd, if you don't tell your brother, or get your brother's videos pulled down. I don't get a lot of views. Why all the pressure? <laughs> so, that's the latest on that. So I hope the lawyer will do the right thing and not likewise be indoctrinated by the church as a Mormon to pursue her client's frivolous interests in manipulating the court. Because that's what my brother is doing. He has lied to his lawyer, whom he paid, to force her to present a lie to the courts in order to ruin my life to help the church with their lies and I made that very clear to her that that's what's being done as I pointed out the manifested truth about YouTube telling my brother he doesn't have a case because he's a public figure. That's the whole basis of it. If Todd wants to take down his social media profiles and go into silence, yes, then he's no longer a public figure. Just dumb. But yeah, Mormons become evil. You become weaponized with your indoctrination of misinformation. And thus Chad Daybell, mass murderers, and horrible, gruesome murderers, and rapists, and other such of things. Because, because the church isn't true, everything is false. Everything needs to be reinterpreted under the Jewish lens. If you want Joseph Smith's church,